previously on Homeless. I love Minneapolis. This is my birth city. They do care for their people. Just a handful of bad choices that got me to where I'm at now. I'm a drifter, so you know what I'm saying? I'm not homeless. I'm homeless. I like being outside. You're always going to get uprooted and, and, and moved. So people are aware that this is temporary. Yeah, ab that, absolutely. That it's they... temporary. And then it'll happen again in five, six months. It's over and over and over again. People are asking, you got Fetty? You got Fetty? Not understanding how dangerous fentanyl is. Because they want it or they want to avoid it? They Because they want it. I might be addicted. I ain't depressed, stressed, and nothing like that. I feel like I'm rich. What we want ultimately is a place that we can just be left alone and just live. I actually have a whole apartment that I could go to, um, which is kind of crazy to, to say, but I can't leave until things are figured out right now with the camp and where they're going to end up. Some have their additions, mm -hmm. whether it's a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. they gotta go to the liquor store, mm -hmm. get that first bottle, or whether they go get shot to smoke a pipe. Mm -hmm. But after that, that's the start of their day. That's the engine start of their day. Yeah. Start. But then they go out most. There's some that don't. Well, if that person ain't starting to car that day, they ain't going nowhere. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They ain't started for them. Then they gonna call it Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> They gonna call it Grand Theft Auto, man. You can't start nobody else's engine. Bottom line, it comes down to caring. Because if you're doing anything out of love, God got you. Mm. Ten for old. That's any Ooh, casino boy. you want to go to, go to God's casino. Because you guaranteed to leave a winner. Yeah. Ain't no snake eyes and box cars and crap guys with the casino, man. He's uh -huh. passing them out. You hit 21, black check, head turn. <laughs> Put all in. Go all in. How do you feel about the birds? The birds is part of nature. They part of us too. They just come and hang out soon. We got some snacks left over for them. You look like themselves like birds, because all we doing is fly. Get bird, go out, work hard, get some food for each other. Run in packs. February is halfway done. You're through January. Are you starting to think March and spring? When the weather starts getting warm, I'll start thinking spring. Are you pleased with how things have gone so far? We died. That's good. You get people who go on like drug vendors and they stay in their tent and you don't see them for days. Well, you would assume that she's a drug vendor and they could be dead. I don't know. We'll get through this week here and just go on a vacation. So, just going to the East Coast. So what's that going to mean for the camp? Uh, I'll, I'll find it right. I'm sure there's there's plenty of oil, so go. you'll find a way. I'm sure we will. I'm sure they will. Maybe I'll just leave it up to them and see what to do. One of these new guys asked me the other day about propane. And they weren't sure where it came from. I'm like, well, how do you think the propane gets there? Well, I don't know. Somebody drops it off. If the propane ferry doesn't just drop propane off. Well, the propane gets here is I go it up and get it filled and bring it back. He's like, oh, who pays for that? I said, that's my point. <laughs> you don't know. Someone made a comment the other day that they were yelling at the one of the lady volunteers that dropped the food off uh, about how bad it was. And I, you don't want the food? Don't eat it. That's fine. But they don't have to come out here in the freezing cold and bring us food. They don't have to do that. So if you stop feeding them, they're just going to be hungry, thin, and homeless. So the people, a lot of the people here are, are helpless? They're not helpless, but Food is not going to be on the top of their list, uh, unfortunately. We bring food uh, once a week to, uh, to all the north side camps. The way we go to four different camps and get about 250 meals delivered every uh, uh, every day. Tell me a little bit about what you get out of this. What I get out of it? Yeah, I mean, this is an unpleasant place to be, yes. aesthetically at, at, the, at the very least. So, like, what do you, what, why do you do this? Yeah. Uh, 
Well, I've been helping with loaves and fishes uh, in different loaves and fishes sites for about 30 years. And this is just, uh, their, their, their tagline is uh, a meal for everybody, no questions asked. And so when people are out here, they're out here for lots of reasons. And I don't need to know the reasons, but the fact is everybody needs to eat. Something that's in my heart, and it's what God would want us to do. So that's why I do it. What kind and of... And it's enjoyable. Yeah? You know, it's an odd, odd way of putting it, but it's, uh, it's one of the highlights of my week. And I work full time. I mean, I have a busy... Uh, Busy life in lots of ways, but this is a I look forward to my Tuesday outings every week. So a woman who overdosed about six or seven weeks ago here, and I've talked with uh, her boyfriend about it. So we do get to know people in the camps. So it's hard, hard for me to believe that uh, there's this many people still living in the cold of Minnesota in tents. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me, but here they are. And some of these, some of our neighbors here want to be here. They, they don't want to be sheltered. They, they, they like the community that this provides them. So, so it's complicated. Do you see some people here, though, who are really appreciative? Yeah, I've, I've seen quite a few times people like when the volunteers come with their bags, that's just one of them. Mm -hmm. They go out and help them and help them distribute it. And, and that's really nice to see because mm -hmm. they don't have to do that. But at the same time, they don't have to be here giving us food. So I think that's in the whole world, though. The thing with the a homeless camp is it's a little tiny world. So everything you see happens in the outside world, but you just see it here because it's a small place, I think. And people get trapped in this world. Yeah, they do. They do. I know a few people who got housing and... Um, they don't like being there. It's not comfortable. They don't feel like... That surprises people. Why? It's just like people got out of prison. You've been in prison for 25 years. Half the time you were in solitary confinement. You don't know what it's like to live outside anywhere than in the prison. I mean, it, it's kind of weird, yeah, but... <clears throat> it's kind of a sort of freedom being homeless. You don't have to answer anybody. You don't have to pay your mortgage or your rent. When people say that, well, I like to be homeless. I like to live this way. I can see why they would. I mean, it's, 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 it's freedom. This is a freedom of opportunity. See, when you're at the bottom, you ain't got no other way but to go up. Okay. <laughs> An opportunity to show that they want and can do better. They just, some is just here just to find themselves. Mm -hmm. They came, they know what they got to do. You know, they just got to get up and do it. You know, I have a big thing with. What keeps them from say, doing it? Huh? What keeps them from doing it? A lot of them is dealing with their inner selves, the, you know, the, those inner demons and the other dragons and whatnot. Whether it be drugs, drinking. Mm -hmm. What do you got going on today? Help build and clean up. Uh, go work out yeah. the restroom. Oh, okay. Is that your profession, your mechanic? Yep. Myself, I'll be going to the studio. Oh, yeah? I'm an artist. Yeah. They call me Phoenix. Cause I'm strong, loyal, and I'm willing to die. Cause I can't shake seeing the life leaving my homeboy's eyes. You talk about pain, talk about what people go through. If you ain't willing to die for it, don't represent it. And there are a lot of people who hurt. Mm -hmm. They hurt bad. Since I've been out here, I've probably lost close to 30 friends. It's been mostly the overdose. I'm scared every time I, I see them do what they do. I'm scared every time. What I want, I'll get it, but I'm bored with what I got right now. I'm just thankful I'm not six feet deep in a box right now. My music provides an outlet for me. Mm -hmm. but a lot of people would rather, would rather, when they listen to music, only see and feel what makes them happy. Me, I want you to listen to my music and, and, and go through the whole spectrum. It was called Ishmael the Phoenix Transformation Volume 1. Transformation Volume 2 Phoenix takes flight. It's in the works. It should be out in, within the next few months. Are you content living outside? No, I'm not. And I never will be. Actually, I don't know. People, I guess people who who have a relationship with God, not a religion, a relationship with Him, they'll understand this when I say that, that I'm out here for a reason. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be out here. I understand when I say that. I'm supposed to be here. Okay. 
all I can do is just leave it up there. I'm supposed to leave it up there. Life. The reality of it all is, motherfucker, it's just life. Giving you all this real shit, I put it down cause I'm trying to make a come up. Life. Giving you all this real shit, I put it down cause I'm trying to make a come up. Hey, everybody laying down in the same shit in this toilet, but it's always one or two that want to get up and piss on everybody that didn't want to lay back down in uh. Life. Giving you all this real shit, I put it down cause I'm trying to make a come up. I'm doing a story about the camp. So I'm just getting all aspects of it. Including the services that they're offered and such. Uh, just cleaning the toilet. You, how often do you come for that? Is, is that always you? So you've done it several times? Yep. Okay, and I saw you like straighten it out too. Uh, I had to get it out of the road because for some reason someone pushed it out of the road. We gotta take a picture, show what it looks like before and what it looks like after to prove that we were here because there's people in the camp that are uh, complaining to us about it because when it's dirty below and you show up and the toilet is full of garbage and shirts and everything else, I can't really do anything. I can get out what I can get out and that's all I can do. But you have to go in there and pump it out or clean it you out? Know, there's not much for garbage in there today, but... Okay. Because while well, I was here yesterday and I cleaned all it out, they haven't really destroyed it yet again. When we brought them down here, there was no graffiti or nothing on them. Nothing was broken in them. It's not everyone. It's only certain people that decide to do it. But more or less, shake my head at it because some people need it, but others just don't care. If I were to take these ones away and bring new ones right back down, they'd look like this again in a week. Nice. Morning. Can you come talk to me over here? Yeah. yeah, no problem. I'm interested. Like, your tent is like. What's that? No, I'd love to. Are you doing the story on the homeless or? Yeah, that's right. Wow, you cook in the dark like this, huh? Yeah. I think I'm losing my eyesight because I can see better in the dark than I can in the light. Light hurts my eyes. They say we're homeless, you know, I don't, I say, I'm not homeless. The reason why I say that is because my ancestors lived in teepees, modern day, so it's called a tent. Yeah. You know? So, I'm at home out here. I help a lot of young ladies out that are homeless that are being abused by a lot of guys out here. Right. Um, I ride my bike around at night, make sure they're okay, see if they need help. I saved 122 lives. 36 of them I saved twice. 22 of them I saved three times. I know, um, my higher power brought me here. Kept sending me back here and, uh, I saved six lives for, from, uh, tent fires. And one lady was mad at me and told me I owed her 150 bucks because I jerked her out of the tent after a tank exploded four feet away from us. Owe her for her tent? Or did you, or was order, she hurt? Order, order for her drugs. Oh, that got burned in the fire? That she dropped because oh. she was trying to collect it and I just grabbed her after that tank blew up four feet from us and there was other tanks that were closer. And I just grabbed her and jerked her out. There's resentment toward you for helping I, someone. I was, but you still, you still find the community worth being a part of, despite the friction. I can't give up hope, and I gotta have faith. I've never had that before. Hope in what? Hope in us. Humans. I was always, I was always a taker. 
Mm -hmm. I was always destructive. I was always angry and full of rage. And it took me a lot of time to get to where I'm at now. And I call it my purgatory because the one person that counted was my wife. She died August 23rd of 2016. And I tried to save her and I could while our seven year old son watched. To see all the hurt in his eyes brought back a lot of shame and guilt from my past as a child. Right now he's got I, his auntie's got temporary custody of him. I signed it over because I'm out here doing this. He's 13 years old. I, I know where I'm going. There's been six attempts on my life. I've died three times. I'm not afraid of death. I've had guns pulled on me. I've been shot at. I've been jumped a couple times. You know, I used to think I was invincible, but mm -hmm. after, after getting, getting to be this age, you know, I start to realize that I wasn't invincible. They, was trying to, they wasn't trying to kill me because I was invincible. They was trying to kill me because I was like a mangy dog, rabid dog, you know? Saving those overdoses, you know, it's like I was really reliving my wife's experience uh, passing away, you know. She didn't overdose, but she was dying of diabetes. You know, and just the feelings of trying to save her and not letting go. I had to relive that every time. I got one thank you, you know. One thank you, and that was from a, a young lady that was only about 22 years old. And she was under for about eight minutes when this, when this guy called me over to his tent. He goes, I don't know if she's overdosing or if I don't know if she's sleeping. And I looked at her and I said, you got any Narcan? I said, because she's, I said, look at her skin's discolored. And it took me about 20, 25 minutes. And when she came to, she said, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I was just blowing in her mouth, giving her air. I said, well, Young lady, I said, I just brought you back. And she started crying. She said, thank you. That's the only thank you I've got. So again, given the lack of gratitude, do you just see it as, you know what? I need to keep doing good whether I'm thanked or not. Yeah. It just doesn't sound very rewarding. You do all this and you people know, don't don't seem to care. They don't. They're selfish. Their addiction got them in a selfish state. They can only that's the only thing they can think of is the drug. Mm -hmm. That's okay. You find purpose in helping secure these communities. Yeah. Despite the hardships. What's, what's better what better way to use my You know? Have you had an experience living in a community like this where you were in a part of a community where it was a lot of people that were like you that were more... Um, I was one of those people that destroyed and mm. everything. I think that's part of why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, I'm not going to be able to make that journey with my relatives. I'm going the other direction. I'm going, I'm going, I did so much bad. My grandfather used to tell me, I have to do 10 good deeds for every bad thing I've done. I ain't gonna be able to live a lifetime to finish off my good deeds. So. You're trying. I'm trying, I'm hoping. You're making you know, breakfast for a, a, a single mother right across the way, right? Yeah. The lady that passed away, Poppy. Not to 
people. She lost her eyesight. She lost part of her body. She was losing her organs. And she never gave up hope. I'd be doing her some injustice if I do. Mm. You know? I'm gonna do what I can. Mm -hmm. You gonna take a break? Yeah, as soon as I get a look. Uh... I've been seeing you working straight the last two, three hours. Yeah. If I don't do it, nobody will. I think that was a hell of a job. Say that much. Is it a daily thing? Lifely thing. You take breaks though, right? Yeah, to do drugs. Back no. to work. Yes, sir. No, I mean like take break from the from the fentanyl. No. Can't. You don't take a weekend off or a day off to sleep or something? Yeah, that's about it. Sleep, but shit's physical, you know what I'm saying? If you go without this shit, kiss your ass. You know what I'm saying? And that's how most of these pills operate. It surprises people, I think, because they think they think of opiates or heroin. They think people are going to be uh, just sort of laid back, you know. Yeah, we're moving. Well, you're moving. Yeah. If you don't, take the toll on your body. You know what I'm saying? Detox, withdraw, put in your juice. Do you get sidetracked with these projects when you want to be doing other stuff too, though? Yeah. Like your, uh, like the art you enjoy, the creative art. The music. Yeah, the music, the mission. It sounds like you want to do like a mission. Yeah. And what we're doing is preparing the kingdom in the last days to be the first fruits of the kingdom. Reffing it for life, this thug life. Truly humble under God. We thugging, you know what I'm saying? I don't have time for it, man. Sad. I got me, my girlfriend, and then I got all of these jobs to do in order to physically take care of my habit. You know what I'm saying? And it's a, it's a daily chase. How do you fund it? Whatever, man. Do it to yourself, homo. Hmm? Do it all except gay for the pay, bro. Anyway, except gay for the pay. I get it. I get out here, you know what I'm saying? It was flying a sign to uh, laboring this shit around here. Uh -huh. Or getting out there and getting it from the mud. You know what I'm saying? I assume it really affects your mood. Like one minute everything's great, and then everything's not great. Yeah. I'm, I'm already, if you can't tell that everything's not great stage. Uh, just gotta cover it up, though. I assume it's one of those things where you plan on quitting one day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. 
myself right, you know what I'm saying? I got kids. Right. I want to leave this place. But I can't leave the place. It's, it's kind of. Jim was telling me, you know, you just have to make a choice. And then everything else after that will follow. I said, well, what if it's not the right choice? I said, well, what's the right choice? You knew what the right choice was, you didn't make it. Yeah, he said, he said a choice, not the choice. <laughs> I think he wants me to leave this place.